Hey everybody, welcome back, Stonebroke Adventure. This is part three of our DIY solar generator build. Uh, first episode, overview. Second episode, we built the lower section, the lower module, which is our 12 volt section. So you can go to my channel and find the playlist. It'll give you all the uh, episodes of this series. So today what we're gonna do is we're building out the solar uh, component, the solar inverter component of this. So the two main components in this top module are gonna be your 30 amp MPPT solar charge controller. Uh, this is the lead time 30 amp MPPT, really nice uh, MPPT charge controller. And we're gonna have the VBOR 2500 watt inverter, right? So this top module is what you're gonna use if you're going off grid and you wanna charge this whole system with solar and you need 120 volt service out of this thing. Uh, we're gonna have our 120 volt outlets. Another component we're gonna be putting in this thing, the pre-charge circuit for the inverter, just to pre-charge these capacitors every time we plug it in, just to protect it. So let's just go ahead and get right into the build. How are we gonna lay this out? So we got the large inverter, right? We're gonna install this inverter, inverter right down here in the bottom, right? Give us some space so it can cool around the sides. We will have to install a cooling fan in this box for sure. We have our little outlets plugged in, right? And we're gonna put the MPPT charge controller. Really kind of a neat way I figured out to mount that so it's easily accessible, but plenty of room for cooling down below. We're gonna be installing our Anderson connector on this side right here. Let's build the mount for the MPPT charge controller. What's nice about these modular Bauer toolboxes is they have these half inch slots. You can slide half inch plywood right down into those slots and it actually lines up perfectly with the width of the lead time MPPT charge controller. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out a notch uh, that's gonna wrap around the inverter. That notch is actually gonna hold that inverter in place. Let's smooth everything out with a little sandpaper, clean it up a little bit. Yeah, once we slide these in, this inverter isn't going to go anywhere. They fit nice and snug and secure. And look how good that charge controller fits right on there. It's perfect. Yeah, we're happy with that. Yeah, the lead time charge controller comes with this little template. We're gonna use that to line our screw holes up. Let's go ahead and get all of our mounting screws installed. Let's put the charge controller into place and that fits perfect. So we're gonna be installing a couple bus bars in this component. Uh, these are the lead time bus bars, uh, 300 amp bus bars from lead time. We have the black and the red, the positive and the negative. Uh, real tight configuration in this box and the bus bars really come in handy to make all those connections. They look real good and they're practical. Let's go ahead and install our Anderson connector mounting plate. Uh, we learned this little trick in our last episode, but you can cut this plastic in the box with a hot knife. I'm just using a pair of vice grips and a razor blade. You heat that razor blade up red hot, and then you can just kind of cut right through that box. You don't have to use a saw. Just be careful of the smoke and the fumes. But you can see it makes a real nice cut, lay everything out good and it just makes quick work of cutting into these boxes. With that hot knife, you can hold really tight tolerances on here and you can see that everything just fits in perfect. Now that we have the mounting bracket installed, let's go ahead and install the Anderson connector. This mounting bracket comes with all the hardware you need to install the standard Anderson connector. All right, our next step, we're gonna cut the holes for our 120 volt outlets. Of course, we're gonna use the same method, the hot knife method. 
works really good. We have our holes cut. Let's go ahead and fit these in. I say, look how nice and tight that hot knife cut method works. Everything fits in uh, just like it's supposed to. All right, I think it's time we should install the remote on off switch for our inverter. We're gonna cut that hole, same method. Knock that punch out out, and you can see that this thing's gonna fit in there. And uh, looks like most of our holes are cut now on the project. Let's go ahead and install the 250 amp circuit breaker for our inverter. Let's look at the inverter pre-charge circuit. We're gonna drop this inverter into place. We have the power coming in, main power coming into the bus bar, okay? This bus bar is feeding the circuit breaker. The circuit breaker through the circuit breaker goes to the inverter. Okay. Negative side, coming through to the bus bar, coming out to the inverter. Okay. We have our switch in line with these two lines. The pre-charge switch, there is the little resistor. The push button is out here on the outside. We have our cords plugged in, 120 volt cords plugged into the inverter. So uh, let's go ahead now, put the charge controller component into the box. Slides right down into the slot. That's gonna hold the inverter in place. Make sure all the cords are out of the way. I'm just gonna slide that right down just like that. Okay, got that loosened up. We got it right over the top. Let's get our negative for our, uh, our charge controller. Let's go and get that plugged in. what we're going to use for our solar input, right? We installed an SAE connector. We've got our positive and negative coming out of there, right? And that's the positive and negative that's going to go in to the solar charge controller solar panel component. So I think we're wired. Uh, let's get our communication cable in place. That's good. Let's get these cords. We'll bundle these cords up, everything nice and neat. Uh, we're also gonna have to install a little ventilation fan in here. I'm gonna have to find a location for the vent fan. So uh, I think we need to build the extension cord now. This is the top box solar charge controller. This is the 12 volt portion with the battery in it. This is the uh, pre-charge button that I was telling you about, right? We have these Anderson connectors. That's what we're gonna do next. Right, we're gonna make an extension cord to tie these Anderson connectors in together. We've got two lengths of cord, right? It's, uh, I believe two gauge, right? That's what I ran on the whole system was two gauge. All right, that'll give us plenty of slack if we wanna side by side these back and forth them, right? We'll have some options with that little bit of extra slack in there. So we're gonna go ahead, uh, put these little uh, pieces on the end and come back and we'll have these cords made. There's our extension uh, cable, right? Anderson connectors, everything soldered and crimped, two gauge wire, nice and flexible. So we got the build done. Uh, just a quick overview. This is our 12 volt section. Inside our 12 volt section, we have our uh, lead time 100 amp hour mini lithium iron phosphate battery. We have our Vivo, our 55 amp battery converter charger uh, all of our 12 volt accessories right we have usb ports uh, we have the cigarette lighter ports on here on this side we have our outlet so we can just plug in the battery charger you just plug that in uh, that charger is going to activate and charge the battery up this unit here can run independently of the other unit the solar unit if we turn this around we have our 
Anderson connector. That Anderson connector is used to combine the two boxes together. If we need the solar box, we have all of our circuit breakers in here. And in this section here, we actually have the battery monitor, the lead time, uh, I believe it's a 500 amp shunt battery monitor. Gives us all the information. If you get in real close here, you can see that information that it gives. A real nice battery monitor. And of course that stays with the 12 volt section because that's where the battery's at. So we'll go ahead and close this box up. So this section right here is what I would consider the solar charge controller inverter module. We have the lead time, uh, 30 amp NPPT uh, solar charge controller. Uh, next video, we're gonna show how to set that up and we're actually gonna put this entire thing to use. We have our inline circuit protection right in here for the MPPT. Uh, we have a circuit breaker for our VBORG 2500 watt inverter, which is down in the bottom here. Uh, we have, if you look here, we switched out. We were gonna get use the XT60 connectors for the solar input, but the SAE connectors actually were a better option, a lot more stable, a lot easier to put in. We have our solar input, right? So this can stay with the solar panel or it can stay with the unit. And all you have to do is just plug that into that outlet and you have your solar input. We also have our Anderson connector. We look at the front right here. From the inverter, we have our 120 volt outlets and those outlets actually uh, these little interfaces actually come with a couple extra USB ports, right? So we have one, two, three, four outlets, four USB ports, and we have our inverter remote on off switch right here. And you can actually kind of monitor some battery life with that, but we have the battery monitor on the other unit. So let's go ahead and stack these modules together, right? So now these are tied together, put our Anderson connector in. Right, our circuit breakers are off inside the unit right now. First thing we wanna do is we wanna pre-charge the inverter. So let's go ahead and press our pre-charge button. We're gonna hold that down. You can see that we're pre-charging the inverter, right? It eliminates that inrush. We can let that go. Switch our inverter breaker on. So the inverter is powered up right now. Now we can turn on the 12 volt on the, the charge controller and we'll get that set up. We don't have the solar panel hooked up, of course. We got a little setup here. We got a couple of uh, 120 volt lights here that we got plugged in to our circuit. This 2,500 watt inverter, I actually run a, uh, like a small window air conditioner. We have a 12 volt refrigerator plugged in. These two lights and this little air, this little refrigerator running we get in here real close to the monitor, the lead time battery monitor, we're drawing uh, 7.6 amps about uh, with this unit. So this thing has tons of capacity. We could attach way more accessories to this. We have plenty of runtime on this thing. Next episode, we're gonna really put this to practical use. We're gonna hook it up to our camper, run the little air conditioner on it and show you how that works. So from Stonebroke Adventure, until next time, bloop.